That doesn't mean you need to know every single thing about this polynomial. But these are the keys that I am expecting you to know on the demonstrated understanding. So I'm going to work off this board over here, talk about what this group did, and talk through their ideas. So again, center of the room, but looking this way. Uh, I'll say move out of the way of the camera just so that I can record for someone who needs uh, this out because they're sick. Uh, by the way, if you ever, if I do record, uh, you can literally go to YouTube and if you search my name, it'll be one, it'll be the first channel that pops up, and it will, um, the videos will be dated and whether it's AP stats or algebra two. Okay, so use that as a, a study tool. But let's talk through a couple of these things, right? When I look at this polynomial, a lot of us did a very, very good thing that I'm very proud of. The first thing that we identified was the what? Degree, the, the highest power. power. And we did that very, very well, right? When we talk about our degree here, even though this was not first, that's my highest power. So what's the degree, Julian? Six. Six, right? The highest power is six. So my degree is? Six. Six. Which is now important for my leading coefficient. Mancia, if my uh, degree is six, what's my leading coefficient? Three? This one? <coughs> no? So, so just two? Just two. Remember, my degree is here, my highest power is here. So the leading coefficient is two, because we traditionally write it in this order with the highest power to the lowest power, which is why it's called the leading coefficient. So it's whatever that coefficient is. And that those are the two pieces off of a an equation that you should use to be able to figure out all these different things right away. Right? So, Ja'Kaitlin, when we have an even degree, what does that tell me about my end behavior? It's going to go the same direction. Same direction, right? So we only have two options, right? They're both going up or they're both going down. down. Notice how it's simplified as a parabola here, even though it's a six degree. So which one is it going to be, Nate, up or down? Uh, down. This one's going down? Because a uh, leading coefficient is positive, right? Was this a positive leading coefficient when we did quadratics? Oh, no, it's going up. So remember, this was when our a was negative or less than zero, right? It's, it was concave up if it was positive. So we're looking at this end behavior. So degree and leading coefficient telling you about the end behavior. Now, here's what I need you to keep in mind. Um, and so one thing I really do want to emphasize, look at, if you look at the whiteboard, what did Nate do uh, with his group to really help um, him figure out what the correct end behavior was and what the graph might look like. So he, he drew all four combinations of end behavior, didn't he? Yeah. Would that help you visually see which and, and think through which one to have here? Yeah. Right. As long as you know, hey, I want end behavior, draw those possible end behaviors out and that will help you visualize it and remember which one is for an even degree, whether it's positive or negative. Now we have to look at actual notation. This is something that most groups forgot, but this is part of what you did on Matthew. When I ask for end behavior, I'm asking for proper notation. And just drawing a sketch like this tells you what the end behavior is. Even if you don't know what the rest of the graph looks like, I know as x goes towards what? Infinity. Positive infinity. So is that to the right or to the left? To the right. So as x goes to the right, what's y doing? Going up. Going up. Right? Y goes up to infinity. That's it for end behavior, right? Then I have my left hand end behavior. As x goes to? Negative. Infinity. So as x goes to the? Left. Y goes? Up. That's it. So if you can draw a quick little sketch of what the end behavior looks like, you can get the end behavior cor correct right away. But I don't just need the same direction and different directions. I need to know which directions it's going with that, okay? So make sure you include that detail. Extrema, we have several options here. Why five? The degree was six. Because it's like number minus one. So remember the number of the max number of extrema is the degree minus one. Again, this goes back to the if you go back to the simplest idea, this quadratic was degree what? Two. Two, but how many extrema do we have? One. Right? Degree minus one. Same idea. Um, so why are you the three and then the one? Where are those coming from? Because they come in pairs. pairs, pairs, right? They always come in pairs, degree, uh, and so we subtract two every time. Now, the one thing we're missing, okay, no, we have it right here, x-intercepts. Uh, is that what this is, x-intercepts? Yeah. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Mm -hmm. Okay, does anybody want to push back or add on to the, those x-intercepts? 
Which y'all? It, it could be six. Why? Well, I drop five notes. Say again. I drop five notes. That's just how many notes it could be. That's how many it could be. But how did we find the the six, five, four, three, two, one? Because the, it can't be higher than the degree. Okay. There's something else with it. I wrote three little letters over here to help Mason's oh. group. FTA. What is that FTA? Fundamental theorem. Fundamental theorem of algebra. You got to know this. This is a literal fundamental, a base, most important concept of algebra. If it's six degree, what should I immediately know? This is one of the first things we've studied. There's six There's zeros. There's six zeros, right? Well, however, whatever the degree is, that's how many zeros there are. They may be imaginary, they may have multiplicity, but it is a six degree. Arion, it's hard to learn when you're not looking. Headphones out, Jay, you gotta be looking, right? So, if it's a six degree polynomial, it's gotta have six zeros. But are all of those zeros um, separate x-intercepts or real? No, right? Now, we talked about extrema here, five, three, or one. I wanna point out, and I'm gonna redraw it over here. If you look to the right of the end behavior, what Nate drew, was an example of what this could be. Notice how many extrema did he draw? Look again at what Nate drew. How many extrema did he draw? Uh, three. Three. Oh, guys, look again. That's one, two, three, four, five. He did not draw it. Where? Hey, Julian, can you walk up to the board? Okay. Right here. Yeah. One, two, three. Are you just counting the minimum? <coughs> no. Oh. One. You counted the minimum. You need to go in there. Look. One. Two. Okay. I was like, it's one, two, three, four, five, right? <coughs> Max and min there. Now, uh, with that, I just want to point this out. If the x-axis was here, notice... How many x-intercepts would we have? Nine. Six. No. If the x-axis was here, one, two, three, four, five, four, six. six, right? Okay. But what if the x-axis was here? Three. Only three. 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 Right. Okay. Notice that's a double root. Imaginary root. So one. And so it's three x-intercepts. Well, how many imaginary? Two. No, three. Three. I'm gonna tell you. Oh, cannot have two. three. Two. Why is it two? So, one, okay, listen, imaginary, one, never forget this, imaginary have to come in pairs. The only way to get an imaginary is to do what? Whoops. Square root a what? Negative. And when I take the square root of a negative, what do I have to draw in front of that square root symbol? Plus or minus. So, imaginary always come in pairs, right? Two, how many, zero, how many roots are right here, actually? Two. two. It's one x intercept, but it's two roots because it's a double root. double root j. Whatever that is, that's really loud. I can hear it. Here. J. Is that not your? What is that? That's not me. Then what was playing? That's it wasn't your iPad. No. There's something right in this direction. <coughs> Arion, was that you? <laughs> Put it on. Headphones out. Thank you, sir. My bad, Jay. Okay. It's called a matter of respect and being fully attentive and put it off, please. Thank you, sir. So, imaginary have to come in pairs, but remember that's one, two, right there, three, four, and so my missing two have to be what? Okay. Imaginary, right? So a double root plus two single roots, so on and so forth. But that's why the number of x intercepts could be six, but because of double roots, it could go down to five. Because of imaginary, we can get any of these combinations. Now, with odd degree, there's always at least one x-intercept. Does there have to be one x-intercept with an even degree, though? I mean, if I drew the x-axis all the way down here, would there be any x-intercepts? Yes. No. Is this intersecting the x-axis? No. So are there any x-intercepts? No. So does there have to be an x-intercept with even degree? No. If you look over here, you'll notice I drew this odd degree polynomial out. And it, because the uh, end behaviors are opposite directions, it doesn't matter where I move this x-axis, there's always going to be at least one x-intercept. 
So in odd degree, there does have to be one x-intercept. Even degree, there does not. Okay? Now, you're going to have a chance to find these, um, the extrema, Did so one. this interruption? No. While I like the idea of seniors signing each other's shirts, I think it's precious. It's probably not the best idea to let students out of your classroom. Accurate. So if you could, please keep them in there. They'll just have to do it during lunch, during enrichment, something when they're in the hallway. But please keep your babies in your room. We appreciate the seniors and all they've done for us and all they've done to us. Have a great day. Thank you. All right. Can I come over? Can I go for a minute? No, Janae. I don't think the singer. All right. He wouldn't let us have his class last class. Accurate. Uh, what was the last thing I was going to say? Oh. Last thing I was to say is we should be able to recognize how many extrema, but without a calculator, can I ask you to find the extrema? No. Mm -hmm. no. You do not learn how to find extrema just, so I'm saying you can know how many there might be, but to know what the actual extrema is, you cannot do that without a calculator until you take a calculus class. You do learn how to do that in calculus. Huh? We don't have to. You don't have to take calculus. But if you ever get a chance to take calculus, that's one of the things you'll learn how to do. All right, uh, that's it that I want to do with this. I want us to do some practice. Um, yeah, I'm gonna let's get moving with the uh, activity for today. Um, Nate, can you turn the camera this way just so that I can catch this part of the instruction? Thanks. Yes, ma'am. Go for it. Yeah. 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 It will take more work, I will say that. Alright. Okay, <laughs> yeah, look, I'm just saying, y'all think I'm talented, you think I'm crazy, but count. I'm giving y'all support. Alright. Hey guys. Um, yeah, because we got stuff to learn. Alright, we got to demonstrate your understanding for like the last 40 minutes of class, so we got about 30 minutes to finish up some important ideas of 25. Now, hey guys, weirdly enough, I'm teaching right now. Thank you. Alright, um, I just do want to point this out. Starting with an equation, I do expect you to demonstrate your understanding to determine the possible number of x-intercepts for a polynomial based on just the equation determine the possible number of extrema just on the equation. Now, it's the number of extrema. Determine the end behavior and describe it with proper notation based on just the equation. And the foundations for that, remember, are identifying degree and leading coefficient, and we'll talk about some of these things again a little bit later. Um, here with this part of the proficiency scale, uh, or the other side of the proficiency scale, identifying relative and absolute extrema when given a graph. Determine possible degrees and type of leading coefficient for a polynomial based on the graph. We have done that, but we're about to practice that uh, before the demonstrate understanding. Determine the domain intervals of increase and decrease. We have not done this a ton, so I'm about to go back over this with you. Now, you did do it on math yet if you finished your assignment, um, but I do want to practice and go back over that with you. Uh, we have not done calculating the average rate of change between two points. Um, I might introduce this on Monday, and it might be a question on the test, but I haven't decided that for sure yet. But that would be the only new thing beyond this. Uh, all right. So this is what I was talking about, the intervals of increase and decrease. Um, trying, I might just do a different problem with this to make it easier to tackle. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. First off, absolute max and min. Y'all have done a lot of this on math yet. Are there any questions about absolute max and min versus relative yeah. max and min? Okay, what's your question, Cam? Uh, okay, then come up with a more specific question. Yes, Yana. Uh, what is the absolute maximum? Uh, when it's on the test, do we have to put the relative and absolute? Because on math, we have to put both. So if it's an absolute maximum, it is also a relative maximum. But do you have to justify that? Uh, you need to justify why it's an absolute maximum, right? So like for instance, if we look at this graph right here, 
where's my, I'm going to just trace along this graph, tell me when to stop because I've gotten to a maximum. Stop. stop. Okay, so that's a maximum. Okay. Now, okay, do you know why that's a maximum? Okay, so be careful with that language. It's not because it's the highest point. I say that because it is the highest point relative to everything else. But you see how there's part of the graph over here? Are these y values higher than these y values? So that's not an absolute maximum, but it is a relative maximum because the more uh, precise definition is it stops increasing. You see how that would be a positive slope? And what does it start to do here? It starts to decrease. So that would be a positive slope. This would be a negative slope. And so the slope actually here would be zero. That's a relative maximum because it stops increasing and it starts to decrease. But it's not absolute because there are y values for the function that are higher. Okay? So now I come to, I want to look at relative minimum, right? So tell me when to stop because I have a relative minimum. Uh, now, notice here it stops decreasing and it will start to increase. increase. But let me ask this are there any y values below this point? Yes. Yeah. See so yeah. there's points right here that are below? Oh, yeah. So is that an absolute minimum? No, it's, it's only a relative. Now, here it stops decreasing and it starts to increase. Are there any y values below this point? No. no. So I would call it an absolute, absolute max or absolute minimum. No. no. I will point this out. With odd degree polynomials, will you ever have an absolute max or minimum? No. See how it's going to continue down forever to negative infinity and up forever to positive infinity? Mm -hmm. So there's no way here to have an absolute uh, extreme. But when it's both going down, we'll have an absolute max. Mm -hmm. And here, when it's going up, it's going to have an absolute mm -hmm. minimum somewhere. Okay. So those are small things to notice from there. All right. Does that answer your questions, though, Cam? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, this is a good page to cover before I talk about, uh, actually, no, let's talk about increase and decrease a little bit. So here's what I want you to do. I want everyone to have a calculator. I think I have enough for everyone to have one in hand. 4, 7, 9, 10, uh, 13, 16, 18. If I don't have enough, I will. we can send somebody to uh, this William class to grab one. <laughs> We're going to do a verbal notation. Two minutes before we Alright. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I need you to type in. This is exactly what I got. Hey, look here. I need you to type in this equation to your calculator as a graph page. This will work. Come on, it, it ain't that funny, though. So you did like Okay, Julian, you can't be typing that equation in if you're not even looking on the board. No, just turn around and type that equation in. You have the same equation with it, or I created a new one. I need it. No. Guys, F1, F2, F3, that's just which function it is. Okay? No, you do not need to log in. I just need you to create a graph. Yes, but you can just type negative 2x. And the calculator will understand that negative 2x is negative 2 times x. What? What you got? What the word? 2.9 minutes. I need to get a college student. You're not getting a grade. It's pretty good. Once again, you got to type in equation. You haven't even typed any equation. I got one. Well, look at your window. You probably just need to change your window. So, guys, I would probably recommend changing your window. Excuse me. If you look up at the graph. Hey. Pause, pause. Listen, if, if you look at that graph, 
Do I need all of that horizontal distance? I need a Okay, hold on. Do I need all that horizontal distance? No. No. See how there's a lot of blank space horizontally? So I don't need all that. So I'm going to go to my window settings, and I'm going to make my x min maybe something like negative 5, and my x max a positive 5. Now, vertically, can I see all of the y values? Really? Oh, I'm not talking about I was saying, remember, it's going to have to be a maximum somewhere in here. It's got to be a minimum somewhere in here. So I can't see all of that. So I'm going to change um, my y min and y max. I'm just going to guess. Let's try a y min of negative 20. And that's probably going to be more than that. Let's go negative 30. And let's try a y max of 20. See if those will work so that you can see the whole graph, okay? Yeah. That worked pretty well? Ooh, that was a good guess. Yes. Okay. So change your window settings. Okay. Change the window settings for now. Okay. I need you all to pay attention to this. I'm still teaching and still talking. Hey, counsel, am I talking? So, hey, Mason, I'm still talking. So, um, I need you all to pay attention to this because this will be on your demonstrated understanding. And I know we've done it, but it's been a little bit of a minute. So, here's the thing. I told you, first off, what degree polynomial is this? Well, what degree? If it's a quartic polynomial, it's what degree? Four. Fourth, right? Notice this factor is linear. This one is linear. So I've got four linear or four zeros, four x-intercepts, which would lead me to believe it's what degree? Four. I've got how many extrema? Three, which would lead me to the fact that it's fourth degree, right? So keep in mind all those things. And so I knew how many extrema it could have, but what do I need to know, or what would I need to do to find those actual extrema? Find it. Thank you, but how? Can you magically look at that graph and know? No. No, so what do I need to do? Menu. So I go to menu, because every cool crap goes through menu on these calculators. Then what? Analyze your graph. Find your extrema on this graph. All of them. Zero. Zero is literally right there, right, Julie? How do you find the maximum? So, did you go to analyze graph? Yes, actually. Okay, when you went to analyze graph, did you see anything for maximum? Yeah, that's what I was asking. Wait, which one? Minimum and maximum. Zero and maximum. Oh, okay. There you go. So, so now do it for max. So I need you to find your max and your min. You literally did, Julian. Quit. Thank you. 
Okay. Council, I'm about to separate you two if you can't stop talking to each other. Isn't that you too? So, analyze graph, right? And so, does it matter if I do minimum or maximum first? No. No, you just need to find them. So if I do minimum, what's the question in the lower left-hand corner? Lower, lower bound. That just means this line needs to be to the left. Once it's to the left of my minimum, I hit enter. And now it's once to the upper bound, so I just have to go to the right. Notice it's not barely to the left or barely to the right, it's just to the left and to the right. And then I hit enter. Do I have my minimum now? Yes. You do the same thing for your maximum. And so you would just report what type of extrema you have. Now, I need you to emphasize, and I need you to hear me clearly on this, right? When I talk about this point right here, this point is a what? Relative maximum. So I would say a relative max of negative 1.57 comma 6.88. However, am I ever going to accept just an answer without a reason? No. No. Uh, How do we know that that's where a relative maximum was? Clearly, it has a high. The, the, no. the, 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 the why is so, so. It is the highest in its area, but there's a more clear reason. It's, it's the highest high value. It's more. Still. Oh, stop. Oh, stop. That's what a relative maximum is, right? Where it stops increasing, starts to decrease. It's going to matter in just a second. Identify your extrema. What's next? Relative. relative minimum. Now, identifying it as relative because it is the highest in its area, but there's higher y values. The lowest in its area, but there's lower y values. That is good evidence as well. Okay? And why is that a relative minimum? That's how you knew, and so here's the thing, the calculator does tell you the value, right? But you had to know where the minimum was and where the maximum was to find it in the calculator, right? right. How did we know? Because it stopped decreasing and started to increase. Okay. Then we finally have a what? Absolute. Uh, absolute, absolute maximum. maximum. So an absolute and relative maximum. Please write it all the way out. I'm just trying to be a little bit quicker for the sake of time. But notice it's just reporting those points. And again, same reasoning. Maybe with the absolute you say something about, hey, there are no higher y values. Now, this is why I want you to write that it stops increasing and starts decreasing. Because we need to remember that we still need domain intervals of what? X well, domain is X, but domain intervals of increase. Remember how you were doing? You did this on Matthew, especially if you finished it. If you finished what you were supposed to, you definitely did. So, here's why you needed those extrema. What did the function start to do? It started increasing. And then, where did it stop increasing? Oh, that relative maximum, right? So if you identify your extrema, you can easily find your uh, domain intervals of increase and decrease. So where did it start increasing? Is that because it's down? Sure about that? I agree negative infinity, but remember what interval are we doing? So it's not because it was down, it's because it was to the left. Domain is all about my x. So it's increasing all the way through to here. And where does it stop to increase? Your maximum, your relative the relative maximum. maximum. But which point are we supposed to use? Which value? Oh, uh, the x. x value. It is a domain interval, so I have to use the x. And notice, man, see, right after it stops increasing here, what does it start to do? Decrease. And see you. Oh, my bad. What does it start to do? Right? That's why we want to write, identify it as it stops increasing, starts to decrease. So tell me this, Alyssa, where does it start to decrease? Where am I going to start that interval at? To decrease? Yeah. Um. Remember, where did 
did it stop increasing and literally start to decrease? That relative maximum, right? So what am I going to put here for where it starts to decrease? Do you put that right? Hold on. Which part? The negative 1.57. Just the negative 1.57, not the 6.88? I don't know. Not sure? So when you pay attention to the Siona, which one is it? You just put the first part. Just the negative 1.57? And you got to look to where it stopped. Okay, but I just, wait, it's just that for now. Why is it only the negative 1.57? Why is it the not the 6.88? Because we only want the eight. domain. Most times, most teachers, most textbooks will just say intervals of decrease, but what we really mean is a domain interval of increase. If you focus on the language, math is a language, we're talking about domain, it's just the x values. Negative 1.57 to what? Where does it stop decreasing? At 0 0.3. 0 0.3. So I just put, that's the point of the relative minimum, right? Kaisen, after it hits this relative minimum, what does it start to do? Uh, Stops decreasing and starts to increase. So I'm going to go now to an interval of increase, and where's it going to start increasing at? Uh, no, it does decrease. Two. At what? Two. Wait two? I heard they say two, my problem. One, three. One, three. <laughs> zero point one, three. You are not. But you need to know this, guys. And not just let Sean tell you. You got to know something. All right. It starts increasing 0 0.3. Where does it stop increasing? You can't see over here. 2.3. It stops increasing at this relative max. I don't have an answer. Hold on. Then after that, what does it do? It starts decreasing, right? Where does it stop decreasing? Negative infinity. Negative infinity. Now, when you say negative infinity, no, 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 no. you say when you say negative infinity, is that a domain or range concept? Yeah, if we're saying that it goes down, that that's y, but I want x, right? If it goes down, it also goes to the right. And so, make sure that you recognize and show, hey. Uh, I, it's changing at those extrema, and I'm putting the domain or x values. We got, we got to do that. Yes. Really? No, I'm lying to you. Really? <laughs> it, was some, it, it, it was something you, uh, if you finished like, math, you, you should have mastered yesterday. Like, do that on um, evidence like x? Like, no. If I ask you for intervals of increase and decrease, you got to put this. And I will ask you for intervals of increase and decrease. If you haven't mastered it yet, then skip those questions and show me evidence of understanding for everything else. But yes, we should have done that. If you're not sure how to do it, you need to get back on Matthew this weekend. All right. So I want you to go to, let's see, it's like page 237 out of those pages we tore out of the book. And I want y'all, as a small group, <coughs> as your small groups, to answer these questions uh, within the next five, six minutes, and then we're going to go over them before you start your demonstrate understanding. Okay. So, about 236, 237, 237, no, 236 is the one I want you to work on. Okay? 236. What? Okay, 236. Okay. I want answers on vertical surfaces, ladies and gentlemen. Then we'll come back together before we do a demonstrate your understanding. Thank you. Okay. Let's have a wrap-up conversation about these questions. So please go to the center. After that, we're going to do a demonstrate your understanding. So one, we do need to move quickly. But two, I need you to ask questions if you are confused. Okay. So. First things first, Nate, is this your room? Those up here? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can you wait till I get, is it about part A? Yes. Okay, what's your question about part A? Okay, so, Sam kind of like brought it up. He said, when he said something about like the lines, yeah. I think it was to go up, he said something about like, how could you tell if it didn't go like the other one? Well, how do you read a graph from left to right? Here's my end behavior on the left hand side, right? Here's my end behavior on the right-hand side. 
So if I were to think about this, first off, because the end behavior is in opposite directions, what do I know about the degree? It's odd. It's odd. What's the most basic odd degree polynomial we've studied since seventh grade? Hey, what? Since seventh grade. Come here. Linear. Y equals mx plus b. If you look at y equals mx, it's x to the first. That's odd. And so if I start from this end behavior and go to this end behavior, does that line have a positive or negative slope? Positive. Positive. So what's my leading coefficient? Positive. Positive. Right? So if it's odd degree, think about just end behavior to end behavior, and it's a positive slope. So it's a positive leading coefficient. If you think from end behavior to end behavior, right, it's opposite directions like a line, and so it's a positive slope line, right? So it would be a positive leading coefficient. So we already said it, is this degree, is the degree of this function even or odd? Odd. Odd. And there's multiple ways to justify this. First off, the end behavior is what? Different. Different, right? Second off, and it's going to come back up in a second, how many extrema do we have? Four. It's all about extrema, right? I have four, and the number of extrema is equal to n minus one, or at least the maximum number of extrema. So what would the degree probably be? Five. Five, right? Five minus one is four. So the degree is probably five. If I check my roots, this is a single, double, or triple? Single, so that's one root. Double, so that's two more roots. Single, single for a total of how many roots? Five. Five roots, so again, it's probably what degree? Five. Five, right? All these details are coming together. So could this function be a cubic? No. No. Right? Too many extrema and roots. Two different ways to prove that. Right? A cubic should have how many roots? Three, right? X cubed or X to the third is three roots. A cubic at the most can have how many extrema? Four. Three. And the minus one is two, right? Most extrema to have is two. Now, be careful because uh, what Mason was doing um, in his group, and I do want to point this out, with part D, he wrote a whole bunch of intervals. What, what intervals was he writing at first here? What kind of intervals was he writing? The increase and decrease, right? If we just ask for domain, are we asking for intervals of increase and decrease, though? No, it's H, wasn't it? It was, but my point is just this. If it just asks for domain, is it asking for increase and decrease? No. No, for domain, it is just all X values. Julian, which direction is X? Left and right. Left and right. So, on the left-hand side, because that's where I start, what is the lowest X value on the left-hand side? Negative infinity, right? Does it ever quit going to the left? No, No, right? There's an arrow there. On the right-hand side, does it ever quit going to the right? No. So what's my maximum X? That's my domain. From the minimum to the maximum. That is, that is domain. Minimum X to maximum X. Remember, I even have written this as justification when I've been describing my domain. That tells me you understand what domain is. One, I'm showing you, hey, it's an X value. Two, I know it's minimum to maximum. And would that help you remember negative infinity to infinity? Okay. Range. Ma uh, Mason, if domain is X, range is? Wow. Don't make it harder. And I always have to go minimum to maximum. Right? Because earlier, Tanasia, you were thinking infinity to negative infinity, right? But is the minimum y infinity? No, the infinity would be my maximum y. Negative infinity is my minimum because it never quits going down and it never quits going up. Negative infinity to infinity, right? A minimum y to a maximum y. Okay. Um, how many relative extrema did we have? Four. One, two, three, four. 
which we already talked about, right? That's why we thought it was degree 5. How many absolute extrema did we have? Two. Did we? One. Did we? Oh. Did we? Zero. If I look at this, are there y values higher than this over here? Yes. If I look here, do I have y values below it here? Yes. So how many absolute do we have? Zero. There are no absolute extrema, guys. Absolute means there are no y values higher, no y values lower. With an odd degree going in opposite directions, you can never have absolute extrema. Sure, for absolute, we always just put zero. For odd degree. But instead of memorizing that fact, look at the graph. Because I'm telling you, there is too much math to memorize. But if you understand the vocabulary and understand what it means, then it's very natural. Because you could look, man, that's really high, isn't it? But are there y values higher than this point? Well, this is going up to infinity. So yes, there are, the, there are higher values. There, are, there is no absolute uh, maximum. When I look at this, that's really dang low, but are there y values below it? So is there an absolute minimum? No. Okay. And then estimating those. All right, so that you have enough time to do your demonstrate your understanding, we need to start. So clear your desk except for a calculator. Nate, can you pass out this page? Yeah, we have half an hour. if you multiply those two functions. Um, and there's a lot more language to it, but at least on part C, I'm asking you to graph what would happen if I multiply those two functions. Part A, I've given it to you in factored form, and I'm asking you to convert it to what? Standard form. That's something that will be on your test. B, identify the zeros and multiplicity of those zeros. Um, I will say this, to earn full credit on B, you need to do it algebraically, but there are other ways to do it. Um, but I will say, number one might take you some time. I need you to show me everything you can on this demonstrated understanding. So two, three, four, those might take a little bit less time. Think about those things. Um, on C, or on number four C on the back, and five C on the back, am I just asking if the end behavior is the same or different? Basically. No. Haven't we been talking about the proper notation as x goes to negative infinity, y goes towards whatever? That's what I'm asking for when I ask for end behavior. Number six, there are multiple ways to tackle it. But finally, I just want to point this out. Numbers 8 through 14, they all go together. You need a calculator to accurately answer numbers 8 through 14 because you're going to have to use the calculator to find your max and min. I have given you this graph here to help you know what uh, it should look like, and I'll write the window that I use on the board in a second. But be aware that you will need the graphing calculator, so that, and you need to know what it looks like. So make sure the graph you see looks like this one. You got 30 minutes. Let's get to it. Do everything you can. There should be a lot here that you can do. If you don't know it, skip it. Do something you can. This is converted standard form. Mm -hmm. 